What's going on guys and welcome back to Pro Speed Baseball. In today's video we have a great request for one of our online students at ProSpeedBaseball.com on how we set up for soft toss. Today we're going to go over how we set up properly for front toss and side toss. That way we can utilize this extended T work to its maximum capability. Let's go ahead and get started. Guys, soft toss, front toss, underhand toss, all this, all, they all has a bunch of different names. It's so important because it allows us to get what we like to call at Pro Speed Baseball extended T work. And all that means is it's a place for us to work on our swing with some dynamics, meaning the ball is actually going to be changing locations. On the T is, is perfect for making sure we know exactly where the ball is going to be. We can make our swings, we can work on it, but we can also take up that, ne that next level of working on our swing in between full speed batting practice and batting practice on the field and in the game. Meaning we can use side toss and front toss, which are just underhand tosses as a tool for extended T work where we can really work on whatever we need to work on, whether it's drill work or full speed swings, we can work on it. But if we set the, but the big problem is if we don't set this up properly, then we're going to be kind of, you know, working against ourselves. So side toss is by far the, the biggest question we get at Pro Speed Baseball is how do I actually set up for side toss? So we're going to go over that one first. So essentially we can make this really easy. We can use this in paces. So what we want to do, we can, we can use the T here for the actual contact point. So we can say if the hitter is standing right here and this would be their down the middle pitch, their, their perfect uh, T setup for down the middle pitch, we go from their contact point and we want about three paces at about a 45 degree angle. So you can see this line right here. We can say that this line is 90 degrees. And we can say that this T right here, we just want about a, a 45 degree angle. So that's going to be roughly close to how the plate's lined up. This is almost a 45. I think it might be actually a 45 degree angle to the plate. And we're simply going to start with the hit where the hitting area is. We're going to take three paces. One, two, three. And this is going to be our side toss station. So this is usually done from a sitting position where you can sit right here and just make tosses. Now, when you're making these tosses to your, your hitter, you want to make sure you're throwing the ball to the hitting area and not to the plate. Far too often do I see balls get thrown too far inside, and then you're just kind of jamming yourself in side toss. Again, this is just to make sure that, this, that we can give ourselves a pitch to hit that we can work on our swing. So again, three paces at about a 45 degree angle, making sure we're tossing it into the hitting area. The height that we're going to want to throw these pitches is we're going to want to be our max height at about the belt area. If you guys have seen the power zone video, we know that the hitting area is between the belt and the knees. So we want the ball to stay in the belt and the knees. I see a big mistake that I see from side toss is getting too much loft on the ball. So the ball is coming up too high and then coming in. If we're working on something specific, there is a drill for that which we can talk about in later videos, but the ball arching is not what we want to do for standard extended T work. So making sure that the ball stays at its greatest height, about belt high, and then at the, at the lowest, about knee height. So that's how we're going to set up for side toss. Now front toss is a little bit more straightforward. The same height is, is going to be the same. We're going to make sure the ball gets no higher than our belt, no lower than our knees. Ideally, these are a little bit flatter throws. Again, the big mistake from front toss is the big arch in the throw. Again, unless you're specifically working on something where you need some off speed, we want to make sure that these balls are as flat as possible and that they're not rising or dipping down. That They're just, you know, kind of like a fastball, but they're done underhanded so we can control the speed. From here, we're simply going to want about six paces directly towards the pitcher's mound. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. This is where we're going to set up our screen that we're going to be behind. And then uh, the biggest mistake I see from front toss is that the screen is set up too far to the inside. And now we're throwing across to the batter instead of throwing straight on. So what we want to do is we want to line up the opening of our screen in line with the middle of the plate. That way, when we're throwing front toss, our ball is being let go on a direct line where it would be coming from the pitcher. If we're throwing from over here, then our angles are going to be completely off and we're going to be grooving a very weird dynamic in our swing. So again, if my arm is swinging kind of like I'm bowling a bowling ball, I want it to be swinging straight down the line, straight over the plate, not from an angle. If anything, we want to err on being too far over and throwing this way so we're not throwing across the hitter. 
and this is all predicated. <laughs> excuse me. This is all predicated on us having a right-handed hitter. So the same thing goes for left-handed hitters. Uh, but guys. If we set up this front toss and side toss properly, we get the height right and we get the areas right, it's just as important as setting up the tee properly so that we can groove a good swing but have a little bit of movement in the ball so we're actually hitting some pitches that are moving. And then we can have an in, a middle piece between the tee and batting practice to work on our swings mechanically with the ball moving. So guys, get out there, set up your side toss, set up your front toss properly so that you can put all of your T work, all the drills we talk about here at Pro Speed Baseball, everything can be done on the T, can be uh, that we do on the T can be done in side toss and front toss. All right, guys, for those of you joining us on YouTube, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, stay tuned. I got an even better bonus video coming up for you. In the bonus video that I'm going to play a preview of at the end of this video that you can see absolutely free by clicking on the I card or in the link in the description below. It's going to show you a drill that will get you into the perfect lag position with just one easy drill. And, guys, this is what's cool about the, the wall drill. Again, it's a T-drill, but it can still be done in extended T-work side toss and front toss. I highly recommend checking it out. Thanks again for watching, guys. Good luck with your games. Good luck with your swings. And we'll see you guys soon. Today, I'm going to show you the number one move that kills bat lag. But most importantly, we're going to do a drill that will instantly give you a tight transition into bat lag and have your swing look, looking drastically better today. The move that I'm talking about here is when we're going it into our transition and the bat lays down. And now the only thing that we have to rely on for bat speed is our pure swing from Mike Trout. He does this really, really well. You'll see as we pause him here in the max bat lag position, his barrel is really high and you can see that it's barely dipping into that line. You can imagine if this was a nail and this bat was a hammer, if I was trying to hammer this nail in like this, this would be kind of like me dumping the bat. But if I'm letting this hammer swing and slam into this ball over and over again, I'm gonna be very, very efficient. Now, I'm sure you guys are ready for it by now. Let's go ahead and dive into the wall drill. All right, guys, here we go, the wall drill. 